Ever wondered if you could drive in Formula One? Well, hearing the story of Pierre Carlo Ganzani might give you some hope. Ganzani can be described as the most persistent driver in F1 history. Unfortunately for him, he was also one of the worst. So stay tuned as we dive into the life and career of an Italian driver who refused to throw in the towel. First up, how Ganzani got started. Like most F1 drivers' origin stories, Pierre Carlo Ganzani started young. Because his father had his own motor repair shop, he was racing motorbikes before he was a teenager. It didn't take long for Pierre Carlo to transition into car racing. Before he knew it, he was completing in his first open wheel racing in Formula 1. And the young Italian moved up into the junior categories of Formula 3 and Formula 2. These championships are feeder series for Formula 1 and are used to test out which youngsters could become stars on the big stage. Drivers like Ayrton Senna, Mika Heikkinen, and Nelson Piquet all won Formula 3 titles before graduating to F1. And Per Carlo looked to be following the same track. In his debut Grand Prix in F3, he finished in second place. He managed another podium that year, though struggled with the reliability problems with the Scuderia Allegrini team. Between 1976 and 1979, he competed in F3 and F2, as well in sports car series while he waited for his F1 debut. In his final year in F3, he won the Italian title with six wins and two podiums. He was ready for F1, but no team was willing to take him just yet. So instead, he went to compete with sports cars with Lancia Beta Monte Carlo team before joining the Martini racing squad and driving at Daytona 24 hours. That was when he got what he had been waiting for. There was a place for him in Formula 1. Driving for Osella Squadra Corse at the Belgian Grand Prix, but was he ready? Now, the 1981 Belgian Grand Prix. These days, F1 drivers are sometimes criticized for having a simple job, but things used to be very different back when Ginzani was first joining the sport. How different? Well, for one thing, people were constantly getting killed, and not just the drivers. The 1981 Belgian Grand Prix is a great example. During the Prastic session, one of Ginzani's mechanics was hit by the Williams of Carlos Rootman in the pit lane when he slipped and fell. Rudeman himself suffered a double skull fracture, but he was lucky compared to the mechanic. The Osella mechanic was taken straight to the hospital, but after the race news broke that he had died from his injuries. Shockingly, he was not the only mechanic injured that weekend. At the start of the race, Ricardo Patrici stalled his car and his mechanic Dave Luckett ran onto the track to get it running again. Unfortunately, Patrici Patrici's teammate, Siegfried Storr, couldn't swerve in time and slammed into them both. Luckett was severely injured with both of his legs broken, but he managed to walk away in one piece, which he was thankful for. That's how dangerous races were in the 1970s. The lack of safety standards meant that any pit crew member could be in the firing line at any moment. Now imagine your Pair Carlo Ganzani. This is your very first Grand Prix. It's what you've been waiting for your entire life. Then there's the death of your mechanic in practice and almost another one on the first lap. Welcome to F1, Pair Carlo. Next, the first full season in Formula 1. Despite the tragedy, Ginzani did finish his first race in place 13, but at the next round in Monaco, Ginzani failed to even qualify, and from there, it will be almost two years before he started in a race again. Instead, he went back to sports car racing, competing in the 24-hour Le Mans for Martini Racing again. And that year, he was offered a position with Osella again. He had proven himself as a reliable test driver, and they were ready to give him a chance. So 1983 was the year Ginzani finally had a permanent seat in Formula 1. However, he didn't exactly hit the ground running. He didn't get to start the first six races of the season after failing to qualify. Sure, he was slow to start, but it's normal to take some time to get used to your new job, right? The first, where he made it into the starting grid, was at Detroit Grand Prix, where he qualified 24th, more than five seconds off the pace set by Ferrari's Rene Arnaud. And Ganzani didn't get to enjoy the race much, though. His car suffered overheating, and he was forced to retire in the fourth lap, and the season didn't get much better either. Out of 15 races, he failed to qualify in eight and retired from five. At the end of the season, he had zero points, but to be fair, his Osella team hadn't exactly provided him with the best car. His teammate, Carrado Fabi, didn't score any points either. Up next, why did Ginzani finally decide to retire from Formula 1, and what's the record he holds that no driver is jealous of? Don't go anywhere. Scoring his first points, if Ginzani thought was 1983 was bad, 1984 was going to give him his first taste of the real dangers of the sport. In the second round in South Africa, the Italian had a massive crash during a warm-up session. Immediately after crashing into the wall, the car burst into flames, and Ginzani was lucky to escape with his life. After that, he spent a month in hospital, but far from dissuading him from continuing in the sport, he was more than committed than ever and back racing at the next Grand Prix in Belgium. 
Six races later, Ganzani would score his best career result when he finished in fifth place at the Dallas Grand Prix. In fact, those were the only two points he would ever score. Let's just hope that Ganzani enjoyed those points because it was all downhill from there. He raced for another two seasons with Osella before joining Lee Gear Loto in 1987. He jumped ship again to Zach Speed before finishing his career by returning to Osella for a final year. However, he failed to pre-qualify in 13 out of 16 rounds, which led to Ganzani announcing his retirement at the end of the season. He said that the breaking point was the huge amount of pressure put on the driver. If they failed to pre-qualify, then the team wouldn't receive any sponsorship money, he said. And this was a really big responsibility for the driver because otherwise the team couldn't afford to pay the mechanics for the expenses. Was Ganzani really that bad? Per Carlo Ganzani is most famous for a quote of his, where he said, better be back at Formula 1 than not to be in Formula 1 at all. And there are plenty of recent drivers that have had a similar mentality. Veterans like Sebastian Vettel, and until this year, Kimi Raikkonen seemed to be holding on for the sake of staying in the sport. Even though he was happy to just participate, Kanzani also reflected on how disappointed he was that he never given the opportunity to shine. Sure, he failed to qualify in one third of the races he entered, but spending so much time with Osella, it's no wonder really. And when he was at Ligier, he was partnered with ex-Ferrari driver Rene Arnault. Even Arnault, who had seven Grand Prix wins under his belt, couldn't get much out of Laguerre's Megatron engine. The Frenchman constantly complained about the lack of power and only scored one point in the entire 1987 season. So when we take into account the machinery that Ginzani was wrestling with, his results make a little more sense. But his refusal to give up on Formula One dream has earned him the title of the most persistent driver in the sport's history. Ginzani still holds an unenviable record in F1, the most appearances without qualifying in the top 10. Up next, Team Gonzani. After he retired from driving, Per Carlo Gonzani still wasn't done with the sport. He had dedicated his motorsport. He wasn't about to give up on it just because he couldn't get in the cockpit anymore. That's why he founded Team Gonzani in 1992. You might not have heard of them because they've never run a team in Formula 1. But Team Gonzani do compete in the Italian Formula 3 Championship and have even had some success. The team's highest finish was second in the Constructors' Championship and their driver, Alexander Mueller, was unlucky to miss out on the championship by 9 points after after disqualification in Monza. Team Gonzani's last entry was in 2007, and they've made no signs of returning to motorsport. And since Pierre Carlo Gonzani is now 70 years old, it might be a little too much stress for him to manage a team. In 2015, he put some of his old Formula 1 cars up for auction. Included in the collection were cars from Osella and Tolman. When asked about the sale, Ganzani said, Life changes, and I'm getting old. Despite never coming anywhere close to a win in a race, Ganzani is remembered as a driver who refused to give up. We might not remember many of the drivers at the bottom of the grid in 50 years, but they need to be there to fill up the grid. Do you think any of the current F1 drivers might end up with careers similar to Ganzani? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.